This is an overview of the NPC numpad controller for Flight Simulator 10. Now this is a uh, originally a program by uh, Dario Daz Iriberi with many enhancements by Elite Premier Virtual Zone Professor Al Colorado Al Clayton. Before we get into all the details, we'll demonstrate the principal function, which is to allow you to enter frequencies, squawk codes, and so on using the number pad on the keyboard. And we'll demonstrate this by inputting our COM1 frequency. If you'll watch the uh, standby frequency in COM1 and uh, kind of a side eye on the keyboard as I input the numbers, you'll see that after selecting the COM1 function, we enter 122.50 and it appears in the standby frequency position of the radio on COM1. We can then swap the standby frequency to the active frequency using the swap key. I apologize for the uh, glare on the keyboard as my hand moves on it. I think you can see some of the labels and there it is in the COM1 position. What was probably hard for you to see is the information strip at the top of the screen which shows which function is active when we push uh, the appropriate button. Here I push COM1 again and you can see uh, that it is shown at the top of the screen but in order for you to see these various messages a little bit better we'll show you a close up and yes it is raining outside this aircraft. So if we uh, uh, select a key and we've assigned uh, keys for each of these functions you'll see the messages pop up indicating which function is active. Uh, COM2 now you, we push the COM key twice this is uh, a toggle key but you can assign separate keys for this if you like. The uh, nav works the same way there's a separate key now for the nav and so we've uh, set this up as a toggle also and it toggles nav1 to nav2. If you've set a key function before and you hit it again and you come back later it will come back to the next toggle step if you've set it up in a toggle mode. ADF the same way ADF1 toggles to ADF2 again this key can also be two separate keys it allows you, if you have an ADF-2 in your aircraft, to tune that frequency. The transponder code input key has only one selection. There's only one transponder, so you only get one choice there, logically. For the omni-bearing selector, again, same thing. Toggles between one and two, or two separate keys if you choose. Uh, there is an alternate script that says cursor, should you uh, like that kind of labeling instead. And for the autopilot, it has three settings. Again, can be three separate keys, but if you toggle it, it toggles between altitude, uh, vertical speed, and also heading. Also indicated after each one of these labels is the number of digits that are required. For altitude, you must enter five digits. For vertical speed, four. And for the heading, three digits. These are included on the labels as a reminder. So back in the uh, aircraft again, and we'll show you some of the other functions. We uh, looked at COM1. We can now look at the NAV1 frequency. Uh, you notice in the standby slot, 116.7. And we're going to change that frequency right now. So we'll uh, hit the key assigned to the NAV1, verify on the label that we are assign assigning a frequency to NAV1, and enter 108. Eight, five, and you'll notice that each one of those numbers enters as you press the key. Uh, you can use the decimal point. It is optional should you choose, but uh, it's not necessary. Here we've uh, entered another frequency. If you do not press a different key, you can continue to enter other frequencies in the same, uh, in the same device. And we'll enter 109 point five zero here and you can continue uh, entering frequencies as long as you do not select another key or press the nav key again we want to make that 109.25 we can 
there are backspace keys and clear keys that you can uh, uh, assign to completely clear out and restart your entry. And we uh, go to NAV2, works the same way. We'll simply verify that uh, NAV2 is now the active device and punch in the uh, keys and as you enter you'll see the frequency changed now 112.75 hit the swap key and it enters the active area. ADF works exactly the same way uh, you can enter the frequency for ADF1 and if your aircraft is equipped with the second one it will also enter the frequency for ADF2. You must enter all four digits as as before the decimal point is optional however uh, but we do recommend that you sign a decimal point key and uh, again when you enter each digit you will see it appear uh, on the radio display itself and if it's less than a thousand kilohertz in this case you must enter the leading zero so we'll change this to 525 kilohertz and you see that appear if you were to try to enter this uh, frequency without the leading zero, you will get an invalid entry uh, message at the top because this is out of the range of an ADF. The altimeter uh, setting and vertical speed settings work the same way. Uh, however, here these numbers do not appear uh, until you've completed the entry, but you must include the leading zero. This first zero on vertical speed will be the plus or minus indicator. You have a key assigned for vertical speed down and vertical speed up. Uh, there's also the clear key here. You can just barely see that label. Uh, that clears any entry you've done and so you can start over again. So if you want to set your autopilot uh, hold altitude, you push the autopilot button, verify that it says altitude and enter five digits. And remember, anything below 10,000, you must uh, add the leading zero. And once you've finished the entry, the entire number displays. It does not display each digit as you enter it. The vertical speed is the same way, and we'll demonstrate that in a second. Set the vertical speed, hit the uh, autopilot button again, verify it says vertical speed. Hit the up or down button and enter with the leading zero if necessary your desired vertical speed. We notice we've uh, held off on the last digit now we're hit the last zero and the entire number appears. This is a vertical speed up of 800 feet per minute. And we'll demonstrate the uh, aut autopilot heading setting. First we'll uh, set the heading bug in the direction we're headed and uh, presumably we would have the autopilot on heading hold so to set uh, a new heading, again we hit the autopilot, verify it says heading and enter three digits. And in this case we'll say we want to turn to a heading of 215 degrees and notice the heading bug moves to that point. And if your autopilot were engaged your aircraft would begin to turn. Because you always have to enter three digits, you know, something less than 100 requires a leading zero. And we'll demonstrate that here. We'll enter 030 degrees and we see the heading bug turn to 030 degrees. The uh, Omni bearing selector, or in this case cursor, uh, in the Baron, this is a, a cursor style uh, HSI, can be set the same way. We select OBS1 function and right now it's pointing roughly to the south. Let's say we want to turn it to 245 degrees. We simply uh, select the function, enter 245, and the needle turns. Likewise, if uh, we want to enter something less than 100, leading zero is required, 050 degrees, and the needle turns to that heading. In this case, uh, we have a uh, radio magnetic indicator type of uh, VOR2, so we're going to enlist the help of a little special uh, add-on uh, set of instruments in this particular aircraft, which is a pair of uh, Omni heads like you see in the Cessna 172. Notice here that um, Omni 1 is already set at 050 degrees.
that's because that's what we just entered in uh, OBS1 and just to show you that that will change if we enter something different we'll put in a different uh, omni bearing heading 120 degrees and you notice it turns around to that and the needle turned also we select uh, uh, Omni Head 2, OBS 2, we'll uh, enter 0, 060 degrees and the indicator turns accordingly. Uh, squawk code entered the same way. Press the key assigned to make the transponder active and enter the desired code. Remember, four digits required, so leading digits are required if you're going to enter something less than 1XXX. Here we have entered 0515. And likewise, if you enter an illegal code, we'll put in 0519, no eights and nines and squawk codes, you'll get the invalid entry indication. This uh, version of NPC also works in certain payware aircraft. Uh, we have a selection menu. The default, which you do not have to activate uh, when you start up, it always is on the default FSX. But you can also select the A2A Cherokee 180, the Flight 1 King Air 200, uh, the, and the PMDG 737s and 777s. There's also an off function. Whichever you desire, you simply uh, select it uh, by the keyboard and hit enter. And either the NPC is off or the other type of aircraft you want it is selected. This requires a, uh, a separate key to activate the menu, so you would assign this. I didn't show that on the keyboard. It's on the other side of my keyboard. Uh, and we'll show you the uh, notifications you get when you make a menu selection. Here we uh, are back in the center of the screen again. You see the numpad control off when we entered the asterisk. And when we entered the 4, uh, it uh, indicated we had the PMDG 737 NGX selected. One additional key that is required that I do not have assigned on my keyboard, and those who know me know why, is the uh, auto throttle setting. You can use uh, uh, either knots or a mock for your auto throttle setting, and the entry is uh, similar to all the other entries we saw. These two can be either toggle, a uh, single key that toggles, or two separate keys. When you're uh, programming the radio frequencies, they work the same way in the uh, uh, PMDG as they did in the others. Uh, you simply uh, enter the frequency the desired. Here we'll want put 12575 in, and make the swap, and to the active. Uh, just as we did in the Baron, in the in the stock FSX Baron, uh, nav radios, COM2 radio works the same way, as does the transponder. Uh, select squawk, enter the code directly, and it goes. The difference in the uh, NGX and other aircraft uh, is in the autopilot setting, and here we'll show you how that works uh, in the 737. Uh, normally you would have to turn these knobs with your mouse pointer. You kind of grab the the uh, dial, little hand turns one way or the other, and things go up and down as uh, accordingly. Uh, in this case, if you keep an eye on the altitude here, we'll, again, just like we did in the stock uh, Baron 58, we'll select the autopilot uh, switch, verify it says we're entering our altitude. Uh, three digits will go to 26,000 feet here. Keep an eye on that altitude box and the knob and you'll see when we're done entering the last digit it will scroll up to 26,000. Likewise if uh, we want it to be at 12,000 feet enter 12000 and it scrolls down to 12,000 feet Again, anything less than a five-digit altitude requires a leading zero. We'll uh, enter the vertical speed. It works the same way f as far as entry goes. You're required to select a up or down and then a four digits. And here we'll put in a vertical speed uh, down of 2400 and you see that it scrolls down. And we'll enter a vertical speed up of 3,200 feet per minute, and you'll can, you can see it scroll up as it goes. The 
the other uh, ones work the same way. You, you enter them just like you do in the standard uh, FSX aircraft, but they all scroll. So we'll select the autopilot heading setting, enter 220, and it scrolls to that value. Again, three digits required, so leading zeros required for anything less than 100. The airspeed, you can select uh, uh, airspeed by uh, knots or Mach number. Enter the value and it will scroll accordingly. Same thing with the course selector. Select, uh, in this case, uh, course 1 or OBS 1 and enter the desired course heading. So pay us a visit at ElitePremierVirtual.com and we have uh, several things available on the website. If you sign up you'll have access to it. it. Includes some useful links with various things that you may have seen in some of our other videos like uh, Sky, a link to SkyVector.com and Plan G and a link to download the scripts for NPC so you can have it uh, on your own system. And uh, we also have a flight training area. You'll find uh, some things that might be of interest to you. Uh, air traffic control, communications, flight planning, reading approach plates, and some information on some of the other types of navigation, including uh, VOR and ADF navigation and the non-precision approaches. And you can check us out on FS Open. Our server address is there, as well as a link to our TeamSpeak which you uh, can click on and join us on TeamSpeak anytime you like.